It's been over a week since we got our iPhone 13 and 13 Pro, and after using both extensively and testing them side by side, I think that everyone's wrong. I found many differences that surprised me, and I have to be honest and say that unlike last year, where I told most people to just get the iPhone 12, this year it is a much harder choice for four reasons that I'll be going over. In this video, I'll tell you every real world difference that I noticed, both the ways that the Pro is much better and multiple benefits of buying the non-Pro 13, and that's not counting the $200 savings. If you watch through this whole video, I'm confident that you'll have a much easier time choosing which one of these is best for you, and I'll tell you straight up which one you should buy. Let's start with how these feel in the hand, and I have to say that I prefer the iPhone 13. Now sure, the Pro is made with really nice stainless steel, which is a bit more protective, and I do love the high-end luxury look of it, and the matching larger camera bump with that shiny stainless steel around the lenses, along with the back that is matte, it just looks really nice. But with that, the 13 just feels more comfortable in the hand. The first reason is that even though the glossy back shows those fingerprints more often, especially on colors darker than my Starlight iPhone 13, that glass gives you a much better grip on the phone instead of the nice feeling but slippery frosted glass of the Pro. The second reason is the weight. Now sure, heavy phones feel like they are much more solid, but the 13 Pro weighs almost 20% more than the standard 13, and it's actually the same weight as the much larger Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, which has a huge screen and a huge battery. Now speaking of batteries, the 13 actually has a larger battery than the Pro, but we'll talk about that in just a bit, and neither of these actually come with a charger, so go ahead and pick up our recommended charger charger that unlike Apple's has folding prongs and it costs less by using our link down in the video description. This might seem silly, but every time I pick up the iPhone 13, it really stands out to me how noticeable that weight difference is in the real world. Now with that, the much larger camera bump on the Pro is much easier to accidentally touch and get the lenses dirty. And with that, if you're somebody who hates phones wobbling on tables, well, the 13 Pro wobbles like crazy. As far as the exteriors and the design, there's not many other differences other than having more color options and just different colors in general with the 13, and both have the same excellent IP68 waterproofing rating of six meters for 30 minutes, which is way better than any other competition. And both of them also have the same antenna bands and speeds, so you're not really giving up any performance in terms of download speeds or reception compared to uh, back in the day where cheaper phones were a lot worse. And now let's get into probably the biggest spec sheet difference, and that is the display and the 120 hertz ProMotion technology. But before I tell you if that really matters, and I think I will surprise you, first let's cover brightness and heat. Both iPhone screens have gotten brighter this year, and the 13 Pro can reach a thousand nits, which is really nice for some people. The 13 now reaches 800 nits, up from 625, which is basically the same as the 12 Pro was last year. This screen is basically the same as last year, but without the artificial software limitation that try to get you to spend more money. Now the 13 Pro on the other hand has a brand new LTPO screen, which not only gets 28% brighter, but it's actually more power efficient as well, so it uses less battery and it puts out less heat. So did I notice a difference? Yeah. Definitely, if you're somebody who uses their phone in direct sunlight, that 1000 nits of brightness is really nice, and if you connect it to say a drone, or you play games outside, screen dimming is less of an issue with the Pro. But keep in mind, you have to use auto brightness, and it has to be really bright for the Pro to reach that 1000 nits. So if you're using manual brightness or you're indoors, they will look the same. Now about that dimming, under heavy loads, yes, the 13 Pro can still dim, but when it does, it usually just drops to 80%, which is the same as last year's 12 Pro at full brightness, compared to all the way down to 35%, which caused me to crash my drone since I couldn't see the screen once it suddenly dimmed. With that, we found that the 13 Pro's more efficient screen cools down and recovers really quickly. Now, if you're somebody that watches a lot of movies or videos, both phones hit the same max 1200 nits for HDR, so there's really no difference there at all, and the same thing goes for speakers. 
Unlike last year where the Pro had better bass, the speaker modules seem to be identical and they are quite a bit louder this year thanks to a much more improved earpiece speaker. So I'm really glad to say that Apple has been improving a lot in this area. I also wanna let you know to subscribe if you haven't already since we are really trying to hit that 1 million subscriber mark. Thank you guys, we really appreciate it. And now for that beautiful smooth ProMotion 120 Hertz screen. First off, I instantly noticed a difference when I booted up the 13 Pro, and even now, one week later, I still notice it every time I use it. This is a feature that I've personally been waiting for for years from Apple, and they have pulled it off even better than I could have ever hoped for uh, with some very clever design and coding. But with that said, there is one major downside, and no, that is not battery life. Instead of being stuck at the regular 60 hertz like the iPhone 13, it constantly adjusts from 120 all the way to 10, matching what you're doing or just trying to save battery life. So either if you're gaming, it'll actually make it smoother than the iPhone 13, and overall, all, there isn't really much of a downside. Being able to drop down to 10 hertz makes a big impact on that battery life, which I'll save for the end of this video, but now I wanna tell you my problem with the iPhone 13 Pro's display, and that is the fact that it is so good that anything else you use feels slow and stuttery. Now, not everybody will notice a huge difference when using this new screen, just like Joshua showed off in his excellent video. So if you're used to a 60 hertz display, you'll be just fine with the iPhone 13, but if you try this out, once you get used to it and you go back and pick up any other device, for example, when I would pick up the iPad mini, it was annoyingly choppy to use that. And the same thing goes when I picked up the iPhone 13 after using the Pro. The screen on the iPhone 13 Pro will make you want to upgrade your iPad if you don't already own an iPad Pro. Now sure, not everybody's gonna care about this, but if you're somebody like me and this bugs you, noticing all the stutteriness after seeing the amazingly smooth display, you can actually go into the accessibility settings and limit the frame rate to 60 hertz. And on the plus side, it still allows it to be variable down to 10, so you'll gain even more battery life benefits. Actually, let's just talk about that right now. Like I mentioned, the 13 has a bigger battery than the 13 Pro, but in the real world, you will not notice a difference. In fact, the battery life of the 13 Pro is actually slightly better. So even though Apple said that the iPhone 13 gains two and a half hours of battery compared to last year, then the Pro gets one and a half hours compared to the 12 Pro, you don't actually have to worry about that. And it's interesting that even on their website, they show off that the 13 Pro can stream video for 20 hours compared to just 15 hours with the iPhone 13. And with that, let's get into performance. Both phones have the same A15 processor, which isn't really that big of a difference compared to last year. Sure, it's a little bit more powerful, it's a little bit more efficient, and it's made it to the new X60 modem, which also uses less power, but the biggest difference are the graphics. We have never seen such a difference between two models like this. The regular iPhone 13 has four core graphics, which aren't that much more powerful than last year, probably the smallest upgrade we've had year over year in a long time, but the 13 Pro has five core graphics, which are a huge improvement. Now sure, both work for everything they're gonna throw at them today. You're not gonna notice the difference, but the 13 Pro has some major advantages. It actually doesn't use any more power than iPhone 12 Pros from last year, but it gets much better performance. And then on the flip side, if you're not pushing the graphics very much, uh, it is actually more efficient than the four core model because it doesn't have to clock up as high to do that that work, so that also saves you battery life. With that, you can actually enable battery saving mode and that will basically give you the same performance as the 13, but using less power and less heat at the same time. Now, of course, that doesn't really matter for a lot of people, but I would just say, keep this in mind that you're not buying this phone for a year. A lot of people now are upgrading every three years, maybe every four years. So if you spend the extra money now, that extra graphics performance is gonna mean that you could still play games and run high-end apps uh, for maybe a year or maybe two years longer than you could with the regular 13. 
With that, the 13 Pro also has six gigs of RAM compared to four gigs. And yes, it is noticeable in the real world, especially if you're somebody that multitasks like I do with some tougher apps like games or apps that load a lot of data like social media apps. And there's really nothing more annoying than loading up YouTube, say you're watching a video, then you go to the camera app, which uses a lot of RAM, take a photo and you go back and your YouTube video, the whole app is closed and you gotta go find it again. Or say if you're posting or reading something on an app like social media, media and it is now gone. So that is definitely money well spent to have that. And of course, it also helps with future proofing. And now let's talk about the cameras because we have a lot of differences here. The iPhone 13 inherited the main camera from the very best iPhone last year, the 12 Pro Max, and the Ultralight has been improved too. But the 13 Pro has an even bigger improvement this year with huge upgrades on both those lenses along with a brand new three times telephoto camera which gives you much better zoom shots than the 13 which lacks this. For low light shots, the Pro's Ultralight lens lets in much more light and it can take nighttime portraits due to the LiDAR sensor. With that, the 13 Pro has a macro mode, which can get crazy close to the subject, thanks to the new ultrawide lens being able to focus, which the 13 can't. You also get support for ProRes video and Apple RAW photos, which I almost never use anyway. But in general, the difference in cameras this year is much, much bigger than last year. I'm actually working on a very detailed comparison between these two, showing off every different situation and how the images compare. So if you guys wanna see for yourself what the differences are for the type of shots that you shoot, I would say make sure you guys have those notifications enabled so you guys don't miss out on that video. I'll just say that if you care about camera quality and capabilities with different features, the 13 Pro is definitely for you. And with that, with all of these differences that I mentioned, this year, unlike last year, the 13 Pro is well worth the extra $200. If you are buying a new iPhone this year, make sure it is the iPhone 13 Pro. You will not regret it. Or maybe the 13 Pro Max, which we just did a super detailed review on, which you guys could check out right over there. Go ahead and click that subscribe button above if you guys wanna help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next video.